Right, welcome to my non-spoiler review, and then we'll get into spoilers a little bit later, so just we'll talk non-spoilers first, of Netflix's The Stranger. Now, I am doing a, I'm just doing some recommendations, basically. Recommendations and reviews of things to watch over the coming weeks, especially if you're in the UK, because you are currently on lockdown in the current climate, not to age this video too much. But this is a very, very good series. Really, really, really good. Um, I genuinely would recommend it. I made my first recommendation on Twitter last night at Mr. H Reviews, all one word. Please do give me a follow. But then I was sat down to watch this. And for all, everything that I could find, okay, for everything that I could find, it looks to be just a Netflix property. It's just there, they've made this. But it also, and I don't know in what way, um, it does remind me of a BBC production, so I don't know whether they have anything to do with it or anything like that, but it's not a BBC production, not from what I can see, and definitely not in tone either. That's something which we've got to say straight from the outset, because people in the UK, as well as the uh, States, will know BBC's falling flat a little bit here and there um, with stuff that they weave into their series. But this is an eight-part series. The initial... Uh, episode one was an hour long then they fall between 45 minutes to 50 minutes each episode and i would genuinely say it is well worth the time uh, i i was enthralled with this season or series uh, they say that it's season one so there may be room to do a season two i don't know it's based on a book. I don't know if there's more books. It's not something I've bothered to take a look at. With these recommendations, I'm literally just giving you the material that I think you will enjoy watching and is worth watching uh, over this current time span. It is very, very well done. Um, we talk about kind of intricate weaves and webs in movies and things like this, and series, obviously. And all too often, they're very predictable. Now, some of this I definitely predicted. Right, There are some bits and pieces where you will follow it around and you will go, oh yeah, mm, okay, it, you know, it's come to its conclusion. I probably, I did think that was going to be the case. But there are some genuine surprises along the way. And even the things which you do predict are not done in a, oh, it's a reveal, like, oh, be surprised. Um, they don't really dumb down the audience. They don't take the audience for fools. And they are delivered with... You know a level of satisfaction um the lady here hannah john uh the actress's name is she was in ant-man and the wasp hannah john carmen very good um really really good great on screen has has a genuine on-screen presence and, and i will say this i think it's probably maybe because she's been in a marvel movie but she has hollywood looks um, and, I, and I think she, when she's on screen, she has a presence about her that you want to watch. Uh, and especially as this sort of, because she is the stranger. If you've seen the trailer, she is the stranger. She has this sort of presence that you want to watch. And she does this, this sort of mysterious protagonist or antagonist very, very well. Um, she's really, really decent in this. Now, I do want to touch on on some technical aspects on this, and I know this probably won't be for everyone, but I think it really does deserve to be mentioned. Um, so forgive me when, when I kind of go through this, but there's some really interesting shots here. Now, for those that don't know, cinema and film, and you, you'll probably find this interesting, is shot on 24 or 25 frames a second, right? Depending on where you are in the world, the US is different to the UK, so slightly different. Now, most sitcoms, um, dramas and, and TV series are all shot on about 60 frames a second. It gives it quite a crisp, clean look. Um, 24, 25 frames a second gives a little bit of motion blur, and it also gives, uh, generally speaking, a bit of a bokeh effect, whereas the, the background is blurred and out of focus compared to what you're looking to focus in on. But it's like an, it's an exaggerated blur. Now, this is, it looks to be, from what I can tell, definitely shot on 60 frames a second, but what they've done here is what I could what I could tell anyway looks to be using cine lenses, which gives a really strong bokeh effect. Now you can see it here, okay, on uh, on Le Chapo's head, and I know again this is quite interesting when you kind of get into the nitty gritty behind technicalities. If we look at this chap's head, 
Um, we're, we're very, very focused in on his face. And then, it, literally, just as you go up to his hairline, we're starting to get that blurred bokeh effect. And now, this, they would have had to have used quite an expensive lens or maybe some kind of add-on filter to get this effect. And it's, it's a really, it's a stylistic choice. It doesn't always work, um, but it is definitely unique from what I could tell. Um, this particular one does actually work, it's not that bad. But then I've got another one, which is an example of where it definitely doesn't work, and you'll see exactly what I mean, um, is this one. Now, he's in motion here, so forgive the low res, but he's in motion. He's the character in focus at present. And you see the little dot in the background? That is a clock, but it is so blurred out. Uh, as a result of, well, a combination of cine lenses with heavy bokeh effect, as well as the, well, potential 60 frames a second, maybe downgrading to 24 with an aperture, well, not an aperture, a, a shutter angle of maybe 360. It's very, very strange. Um, to, it basically, on a technical level, it's a very interesting series to watch. So again, I know not a lot of people will find that interesting, but some of you will, and when I start to talk about technical details of film and, and series and things like that, these are the things which I tend to notice, um, and hopefully pass that knowledge on to you, and then you can uh, notice them. Now, the acting in this is very good. Uh, all around, pretty good. There's some kid actors in it, which are a bit annoying. There's a short, fat lad, which is played up as the comedic effect. I think that's genuinely just him as an actor, but I would have liked him not to be uh, so jovial and jolly and I'm um, fat jolly boy, you know? Um, it's played up, It's it detracts from the seriousness of the show. This is a very serious show. So I didn't really like him. Uh, you'll know him instantly. There's no point naming him as an actor, he's a no-name actor, but you'll know him instantly when you watch it. He's very detracting disengaging from the show itself. Outside of that, the lead, which is Richard Armitage, he plays Adam Price, he's the chap which all of this stuff starts to happen to when this stranger walks into his life. Uh, his whole world unravels, right? Very good. Well, the performances that he does is genuinely quite believable. You know, it's above sitcom level, put it that way. Not, you know, Hollywood or Oscar performance, but it's believable. Um, and on this very small level production, ground roots production, I liked it. It was good performance. So that's it really. There's not too much else to say. I can genuinely recommend this. It's eight episodes for the season. I want to see more. I want to see a second season of this. Um, no, nothing really of note to going to talk about outside of that productions were good technical details were interesting like i showed you uh, and the performances were good the sound design a little bit off in parts but overall very very decent above above average uh, for any kind of series and sitcoms out there let's put it that way now we'll touch on a brief little bit of spoilers but if you are new here and you're going to go because we're going to be touching on spoilers now please do hit subscribe please do share this video and please do like it but that out of the way let's touch on spoilers because i do want to get into the nitty gritty of kind of what happened and why um, and why i think the reveals are interesting so there you go you've had your spoiler warning let's get into it um so she turns out to be his sister and this i could see coming off from probably about episode seven um, slash episode six, there was some slight reveals and hints here and there where you go, oh, that's probably what they're teasing. Um, but it was not done in a ham-fisted, gratuitous fashion. It came across really, really quite natural um, and progressed nicely. I really do like the the way that they kind of stitched everything together for why certain things happened, why this happened there, and how it all kind of just came together into one big reveal. I really did like it. I thought it was a very, very good uh, series. And it's not too often nowadays, and I'm sure you're the same, that you are surprised by bobbing and weavings in narratives and stories. But I think you'll like this, and I think you'll be surprised. Um, and it's all—it's just well worth the watch. 
well worth wasting like eight hours of your life on because you're on lockdown. But anyway, guys, thank you all so very much for watching. There's nothing else really that I want to cover in this review. But thank you so much. I hope you did enjoy it. And as always, with Mr. H, take care.